Welcome to Everyday Linux User and welcome to episode 8 of I Tried It So You Didn't Have To. In this video we're looking at Ubuntu and as you can see this is Ubuntu that looks like Windows 11. Those of you with poor eyesight um, might think that I'm using Windows here but what I'm actually using is Ubuntu which is a Ubuntu based distribution that's made to look like Windows 11. And for all intents and purposes, it acts and behaves like Windows 11. From setting up your system tray down here to the way the quick launch buttons work, it's even got Copilot installed. Uh, the Windows Start button, it's got Microsoft Edge installed, uh, OneDrive. Uh, you've got only Office, which is clearly um, a Windows clone. Now, if, it also comes with Chrome and Steam installed, and Teams is installed as well. Everything looks and feels like Windows 11. So, and I've got some web pages open. So this is the Ubuntu web page. Never heard of this before, by the way. So it's called Windows Ubuntu. You can get it from ubuntu.org, and I've downloaded 11.4.4 the Plasma and I'm going to install it as a virtual machine. So click new, we'll call it Ubuntu. Uh, put the RAM up, click create, give it 25 gigabytes, put it on the SSD. Now I'm going to click um, settings. Give it more processing power. Give it more display power. And away we go. So let's click start. <laughs> click here, click add. And we'll go down to Windows Ubuntu here. Click choose and click start. And Microsoft may well sue somebody over this one. Let's switch to full screen if I can. Let's see if we can change the display. Wow. This, <laughs> this amazingly does look like uh, Windows. So I'm going to choose a raised disk, click next, give yourself a user. click install. So we'll come back um, once this is installed and we'll do the next part of the video. So here we are, we're at the end of the uh, installation, I'm just going to click done. So now we need to remove the device which happens automatically in a uh, virtual machine uh, but if I press enter now it should reboot into Ubuntu. So here we are, we're in the login screen. So um, this looks like Windows, um, but it's actually Ubuntu. Now, it's actually amazingly like uh, Windows. It's unbelievably like Windows. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up some hardware. So I've plugged in my Wi-Fi device. I've enabled Wi-Fi. Is it going to come up with any Wi-Fi connections? It has. So there we go. I can connect to my Wi-Fi. Let's see if it actually works. And it does work. So I'm going to disconnect from that because I'm already on wired. 
let's have a look at Bluetooth. Bluetooth mode. Connecting. Took a couple of efforts, but I believe that's worked. Um, the best way of trying that, of course, is to use Edge and go to Everyday Linux User on YouTube. And it is the Edge browser. Interesting what's happening up there with the address bar is I'm losing half the um, address. Must be a slight theming problem, I'd have thought. Welcome to Everyday Linux User. Today's video, we're going to be talking about Solus OS. Um, this is the seventh part of the series. I tried it so you didn't have to. So, as you can hear, YouTube came out of the speaker perfectly well, so we can close that down now. Uh, so, I guess the next step is printing. So. We'll go into system settings, I guess. It's not perfect, you can see there's little glitches here and there, but it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty, pretty good. So I'm going to add my new printer in. Hasn't found my printer yet has it no it hasn't found my printer let's see can we add it let's just go for the generic office jet i think finish and so we have a, a printer set up whether it will work perfectly I don't know um, I'm sure we could um, install the HP lip software and get that working uh, better so that's hardware sorted out let's see what else is available on this machine um, so down here on the icon bar we've got a search facility so um, search for office you can see the office suite is um, only office so only office is very similar to Microsoft Office so if I open this up I understand why they went with this rather than the LibreOffice because um, it clones it a lot closer to generic word than LibreOffice does and there you go that doesn't unlook like word does it I mean you could easily use that and be familiar with most of the features of Word uh, and it's perfect for the uh, general user. Uh, obviously if you've got specific Microsoft Word features then they may not be there. We've got Microsoft Copilot which is the AI stuff and I've got a video about AI on my site so um, ask me anything. And as you can see, it's given me a detailed description of what Ubuntu is. So there you go, that's um, Copilot. Uh, along here we've got virtual desktops, so you can switch between different desktops, one, two, three, and four. We've got a chat, is that? So they're Microsoft Teams. It is indeed Microsoft Teams. Uh, we've got an Explorer, and it's the Dolphin File Manager, which is a very familiar looking field, um, very similar to Windows Explorer, so you shouldn't have any problems navigating around that. So you've got your music folder, pictures, documents, your videos, 
and you can connect to OneDrive. And then we've seen Edge and down here we've got Discover which is the software center. So that's as close as you'll get to the Microsoft Store. If we click here, um, are there any other apps installed? So we're going to click on all apps and see that. Um, so we've got Android, uh, Anti Micro X, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, Arc is a zip tool. We've got uh, Teams, ChatGPT, uh, Dolphin File Manager, Google Chrome's installed as well. Add you parted. Um, it says about installing system, it's already installed. As it's KDE based, you get lots of KDE tools like KDE Connect, KCalc, which is a um, calculator, KMail, mail program. You've got a terminal called console. And then under here, you've got all the Microsoft uh, online tools. If you don't want to use only Office, you can use the online versions of Word, Excel, etc. And then down here you've got only Office Center um, with Word and PowerPoint clones. Uh, you have a remote desktop client, Steam's installed. Is it Steam or is it just the updater? It's the updater. So you'll get Steam once this is finished updating. Then you've got Thunderbird Mail, you've got uh, VLC Media Player and uh, web camera noid etc so and wine tricks is installed as well so you can install other windows type software by using wine tricks let's look at the package manager and it's kde and it's discover so hopefully they've included flat packs and or snap packages so snap and Flatpak are installed. So what does that mean? That means up here So does that mean Flathub's installed? So I just clicked add Flathub so that will be added. Oh, perhaps if I put in the right password. Uh, but we have flat pack and snap. So if we go home, and we search for something like Spotify, you can see you've got the Spotify snap package. But by adding flat pack, you can add in the flat pack versions as well uh, but because this is Ubuntu based that's why you're getting snaps um, by default but you can add in the Clementine music package or any one of these other ones as well uh, so KDE based discover is the best tool for installing software you'll get a, a great access to all the most popular applications and because snap is installed by default you get a, a larger set of uh, available applications and with the ability to add Flatpak as well you shouldn't find anything that you can't install um, that is available for other distributions. If you don't like the desktop wallpaper right click and do configure desktop wallpaper. You can see Steam's finished installing and you can choose any one of these wallpapers that you wish to install. So that is the end of the review. Um, to sum up, uh, this is Ubuntu. It's a Ubuntu-based distribution made to look like Microsoft Windows 11, and it sure does look and feel like Windows 11. So if you're a Windows user and you want to use Linux, but you want the look and feel of Windows, then this could be the distribution for you. It's actually easy to install and actually very easy to use uh, in terms especially if you come from a windows background uh, it's, it's all right yeah don't mind it at all um, i wouldn't use it myself because 
it does feel a bit too much like Windows for my liking. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, it works. I, I haven't had any major issues with it. Printing was probably the worst part of it, setting up the printer. Um, but uh, the fact that it comes up with Copilot and things like that is, is actually quite a clever thing to add in. So thank you for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.